So in the last couple of years, I find myself using more and more of these various AI tools, these AI chat assistants. And recently I made a video about Olama, which is an absolutely fantastic piece of software. It's a command line application. Essentially it runs in the terminal and it runs on Windows, Mac or Linux. It's a command line way of interacting with these large language models. But you know, sometimes you want to do things inside a text editor rather than a terminal because a lot of times when you're interacting with these chat assistants, you're actually wanting them to give you information so you can actually put it in a blog or an article or a novel, or maybe you're doing some programming. You're inside a text editor already. Wouldn't it be great to have access to something like Olama within Emacs, for example. Well, it turns out there is a really fantastic Emacs program called eLlama that is written and designed to basically be an Emacs interface for Olama. So on your system, you need to have Olama already installed. Any large language models you want to interact with, maybe you want to interact with the Llama uh, large language model or Mixtral or Zephyr or whatever it is you want to interact with, make sure those large language models have already been pulled in via Olama and then make sure you install eLlama inside Emacs. And they have an example here of this code block here. Just add this to your Emacs config and obviously you want to edit it to, you know, the correct language, for example, that you want uh, eLlama to actually translate things to. You want to make sure that you uh, select the right large language models you want to use, for example, uh, in this example, they're using Zephyr and Mistral and Mixtral. And of course, this large block of code, it looks kind of complicated, especially if you're not used to reading uh, Emacs Lisp code, but really it's not that hard. Just take this entire block of code, post it into your config. Now you're not gonna need everything that's in this code block. And I'll show you exactly what you could get rid of. So let me switch to a different workspace and let me go to my Emacs config and let me go to this section of my config here that I've titled eLlama. And let me zoom in a little bit to make sure you guys can clearly read everything here. So we have this code block, this use package block that I pasted from the eLlama GitHub. And for the most part, I left it all intact. By default, uh, their example script had the eLlama language variable here set to German. I set that to English. But of course, you know, you can set that to any language you want. As far as some of the large language models I want to interact with, I typically use Llama. So I set it to Llama 3.1, but I also went ahead and made sure that I had a couple of other large language models available to me. For purposes of this video, I went ahead and I, uh, through the use of Olama pool, I went ahead and pulled down the Zephyr large language model and the Mixtral large language model. That way you guys can see how I can switch between the three different large language models, depending on which one I want to use. And if I scroll down a little further, there was this in the example code block as well. Elama translation provider, this particular variable, this specifies which large language model you want to use specifically to translate things from whatever language they're currently in into, in my case, English. So for example, let's imagine that this block of text here, this paragraph was written in some non-English language. Maybe it was written in, I don't know, Spanish. And I can tell eLlama to translate that for me and I can specify anytime I ask for a translation to always use the Mixtral large language model, for example, is what I have said here. But again, you can change that to whatever it is you want. And then I have these two lines here, these three lines here that are not in the example uh, block of, of code that I got from GitHub to set this up. You can actually specify other variables. For example, I specify this directory here, eLlama sessions directory. So anytime I ask eLlama something, it can autosave the text that it spits out to me, and I want it to autosave to this directory, which is .config slash emacs slash eLlama dash sessions, and that is actually the default value for this if you don't set it. So really, this was not necessary for me to add. I added it for purposes of this video. And then eLlama sessions autosave, T for true. So it's turned on by default, and I left it turned on by default, but if I wanted to turn that off, I would swap the T to nil for false, but for me, I like like having the autosave on, so I'll leave that as is. And then to run any of the various eLlama commands, and there's quite a few, you could do meta x eLlama, and you can see, you know, I've got a whole bunch of various eLlama functions 
that I could run. Most of them are key binded, and there is a default key map for all eLlama functions. You can see the default key map prefix is control C followed by E. So if I do control C followed by E, I'll get this key map here where, you know, I can press the next letter, maybe A, and then I get, you know, some more key bindings. Now I find this key map kind of confusing. So what I did is I decided I was gonna choose some better key bindings for these eLlama related uh, functions, especially the ones I would use all the time. So what I did is I went into my general key bindings section here where I specify all of my key bindings because I like using space as the leader key. And what I decided to do was use space A as the leader key for everything eLlama related. So basically space A you can think of as AI. So if I do space A and you can see which key gives me the remaining key bindings that I could press after that. And the most interesting one that you probably want to play with right away is actually this function here, eLlama-chat, which I have binded very fittingly to space AI. So if I do space AI, you can see down here in the echo area, the mini buffer, it's saying ask eLlama. So let's ask eLlama a question. So I'm going to ask it, what is Emacs? And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to take a few seconds to get an answer. And you can see we get to this org buffer. I have this little progress bar here and you can see eventually it gives me a nice little answer. It spits out actually a quite detailed answer. So it's really going to tell me all about Emacs. And of course, being a, a text buffer, a org buffer, you could save this if you wanted. It's going to auto save it, I believe, if I, if I didn't want it. But if I do space BK to kill that buffer, you know, I could actually go into dot config slash Emacs slash eLlama dash sessions. And I can actually find you know, the uh, auto-saved files for various things. For example, that last question I just asked it would have been timestamped uh, right here. Yeah, that is the buffer that you know it auto saved that answer that I asked. So how cool is that? I don't even actually have to uh, give it a, a file name or anything. It just takes care of that for me. Now you may not like the file name it chooses because it chose text editor software llama 3.1. So it chose the large language model as part of the uh, the, uh, the title, which for me I actually think is kind of smart to leave that there, so I know exactly which. LLM gave me this answer, but you know, you may want to uh, specify a file name for this instead of just going with whatever eLlama chooses. So you can see some of the other key bindings that I specified. Space AP is provider select. So if I do space AP, this allows me to choose between the various large language models that I have downloaded, I've pulled in with Ollama. So these are what I want to be able to switch between. So, you know, if I right now I'm defaulting to Llama 3.0. Point one, but if I wanted to, I could move over to Mixtral and ask a question and then space AI to ask eLlama and I could ask it something really simple. What is the square root of 987? Question mark. And hopefully this won't take too long to answer. And we get our little progress bar going here and I guess it has to think about it a little bit. Maybe the mixtural large language model takes a little longer than the, the llama one because the llama one spit out that information about the uh, Emacs rather quickly. And there it goes. The square root of a number is a value that, okay, so what is the square root of 987? It's not a perfect number, okay. Wow, it's really going into much more detail than what I really needed. It's telling me all about the square root of numbers. <laughs> but it finally spit out the answer, which is 31. 415. Okay, so that is interesting. Space BK to kill that buffer. I also set up key bindings for space AS for summarizing a region of text and space AT for translating a region of text. And let me show you these in action. Let me find a, a text file, though it's not really, you know, we can't really summarize, I guess, uh, scripting and programming. It would be kind of weird. So let me go into my uh, org documents and see if I can find something that is more of just regular text. So how about awk.org? So this is a file on various awk commands that I've found useful over the years. And I zoom in a little bit, uh, this first paragraph. Let's see if eLlama can summarize this for me. So space A, 
S to summarize, and you can see my cursor was a little spinning wheel. It's taking a minute for eLlama using the Mixtral uh, engine, uh, the large language model, because remember I switched from Llama to Mixtral earlier with that, uh, that key binding. And if you're wondering about the large language model, it will always tell you here the buffer name. And you can see it is summarizing what I wrote earlier. And if I do a split here and I go back to awk.org, let's see if it actually change things. Hey, yeah, you can actually see that the text is not the same. It rewrote it slightly differently. And you see, awk is a potent text handling tool, where I said awk is a powerful text processing utility. So that is kind of cool. Now, I wonder how it would handle a translation. Now, obviously, it needs some non-English block of text to translate into English. So let me go find something on the internet. That I'll search for some text that is in Spanish and let's see if it translates it correctly. So I went and grabbed this block of text that I found on the internet that is Spanish and just looking at it, uh, I can already tell it's about Batman and Joker. But let's go ahead and see if this translates this block of text correctly. So I'm gonna select the region and I'm gonna do space AT or e llama translate. And it's taking a few seconds. I've been waiting about 30 seconds or so for the translation here. And again, we're using the Mixtral engine still. And you can see, let me zoom in. It is translating that Spanish block of text into English. And just looking at it, it's very readable. Like this seems like just normal English sentences. So it's actually doing a very nice job. Now, some other key bindings that I added, if I do space A, and then let which key do some suggestions here. You can see space AE is Elama Enhance is what I chose to call this. And these are all the Elama Improve bindings. So there's several functions that are Elama dash improve dash another word. For example, there is a Elama Improve wording function and I uh, am using Enhance instead of Improve in my key bindings, but space AE W would be enhance the wording, so I could pick a sentence here. For example, let's pick this region here and do space A E W for enhance wording and give it a second. And you can see it's going to rewrite that sentence for me, right? Very cool. And I also had a space A E G for enhance grammar. So for example, if there was a problem with this grammar, space A E G, just tell it to rewrite it with better grammar. Of course, it'll take a few seconds. And there you go. So that's just a little bit of what you can do with eLlama. So eLlama, again, just fantastic. And really, I only showed you about five or six functions of eLlama, the, the ones that I find very useful. And there are dozens of eLlama functions. For example, I didn't show you eLlama code review because I don't really use it. I haven't used it. I'm sure it's very nice, but I'm not a programmer. But if you wanted to use eLlama for helping you with your programming and with your scripting, you absolutely could use things like the code review function. There's also functions for uh, helping you uh, edit your code. Uh, you can see code improve. So I'm assuming that's going to help you with like the formatting of your code. For those of you that are creative writers, because many people do use Emacs for creative writing, many people imagine that Emacs is strictly for people that program. But that's not the case. Many creative writers, many people that write for a living do use Emacs as their text editor. And you've got things like the improved wording and improved grammar functions I've already shown you, but there are many other things like improved conciseness. And of course, the translation tool, of course, is very useful. So eLlama, really, really cool. Again, you're going to have to have Olama installed on your system because really it's just interfacing with the Olama command line tool. And obviously you need Emacs installed on your system to use eLlama. Of course, Emacs is cross-platform just like Olama. Just like Olama is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, Emacs actually works on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. So uh, just a little bit of what you can do with eLlama. By the way, I'm going to add my latest Emacs config with these eLlama key bindings and everything already in 
in it. So if you want to check out what I'm doing with my Emacs config for eLlama, go ahead and check the link in the description below. Go check out my .files repository over on my GitLab and look for my Emacs config. You'll find my Emacs config in .config slash Emacs. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tianren, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willy. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Elama would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by the community. If you like my work, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.